Life Audio. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. Do you ever feel like you want to know more about the Bible, but that it's kind of hard to understand? Do you want to share your faith with your friends, but have a hard time figuring out how to do that? Do you want to learn how to connect the Bible to your real life? Well, then this is the show for you. My name is Rachel, and I'm your host. I've been a children's pastor for a long time, and one of my favorite things is helping kids learn how to understand the Bible. I think that sometimes people think that the Bible is just for adults, but God actually really wants kids to know about Him. So on this podcast, we're going to learn all about God's big story and how He shows Himself to us through the Bible. As we learn together what the Bible stories actually mean, we can learn how to live out our faith in our everyday life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. I'm your host, Rachel. Today, I want to think about some things that you and I need to live. What would you say some of those things are? Well, for me, I would say it would be things like water and air and food Then think about some of the things that you and I want, but aren't necessary for us to live. That would probably be things like candy or cookies or basketballs. There's all sorts of different things. But one of the things I love is that God knows all that we need and what we want. The most important need that all people have is forgiveness of sins. We just name some of the things that we need in order to live. Food, air, and water are very important, and we need them to stay alive. But sometimes people that have those things still die. And after we die, we'll either live forever in heaven with God or be separated from him in a place called hell. And since none of us know when we will die, do you understand why I just said the most important thing, the most important need that all people have? Is forgiveness of sins? Well, today we're going to be talking about a scene in the Bible that's leading up to the resurrection story, which you may have heard about or learned about at Easter time. But this is a story that happens just before that in Matthew chapter 21. See, for three years, Jesus, who is the Son of God, he has been teaching God's people how to live a life that pleases God. And he showed God's power by healing lots of people. And think back, before Jesus was even born, and when Joseph had learned that Mary was pregnant and they were not yet married, an angel told Joseph to take Mary and his wife because she was going to give birth to God's son. Joseph was told to name God's son Jesus because he would save the people from their sins. The name Jesus was a reminder for the main reason he came to this earth. He came to provide for our greatest need to be saved from our sins. And we've been studying all sorts of things over the last couple of months. But what we're studying today is the final days that Jesus was even on the earth. Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Jerusalem. Because Jesus is fully God and fully man, he knows what's going to happen before it even happens. And as they are on their way to Jerusalem and they were near a place called the Mount of Olives, He tells two of his disciples to go into the village and to get a donkey and bring it back to him. Jesus told them, if anyone says to you, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it and they will send it back here immediately. So the disciples went into the village and they found the donkey and his mother tied to a post outside on the street. And they went over to the donkey and began untying them. And just as Jesus had said, the owners of the donkey were like, what are you doing? Why are you untying them? And the disciples did exactly what Jesus told them to do. And they said exactly what he told them to say. And just as Jesus said, the owner let them take the donkey and her colt to Jesus. Jesus told them what would happen, and it happened exactly as he said it would. And do you remember how we talked about the Old Testament and the New Testament Well, 700 years before this happened, there was a prophet named Zechariah that wrote exactly about this. Zechariah said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. 
Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous, and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. When the disciples brought the colt back to Jesus, they placed some clothes on the colt's back, and Jesus sat on it. And as Jesus rode this young donkey into Jerusalem, and the people saw him coming, they began to lay their clothes on the road, and they cut palm branches from the trees and spread them on the ground on the road. The palm leaves in these times symbolize triumph and victory. And there was a lot of people in Jerusalem at this time because it was a week before the celebration of Passover. God's people had traveled from many different cities so they could celebrate and worship in Jerusalem. And so when the crowd saw Jesus riding the donkey into Jerusalem, they began to praise God with a loud voice for all the people to hear. And they were praising God for all the mighty works and miracles they had seen. They were shouting, Hosanna! the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. At the time that Jesus was entering Jerusalem riding a donkey, God's people were being mistreated by the government, the Roman government. They were shouting Hosanna, which means, oh, save. When the crowd saw Jesus riding a donkey, they welcomed him as their king. God's people felt that their greatest need was to be rescued from that Roman government, and they thought Jesus was coming as the king to save them from the Roman government. God knew what they felt they needed, but he knew that their greatest need was to be forgiven for their sins. Jesus riding a donkey was symbolic of a king coming in peace. If a king came riding a horse, it meant that he was coming to fight a war. But Jesus came into this world the first time fully God and fully man to bring peace with God for sinful people. And one day Jesus will return riding a white horse and he will then come to conquer his enemies. But on this day, he came to provide for our greatest need. What did we say our greatest need was? To be forgiven for our sins. Once Jesus was in Jerusalem, he went into the temple and he got so upset and angry at what he saw. He saw people buying and selling animals for sacrifice in the temple, and he drove all the people out of the temple who were buying and selling and overturned the tables. He flipped them over, and he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of robbers. Jesus was quoting something that the prophet Isaiah spoke about a long time ago. He said, For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And while Jesus was in the temple, Blind and hurt people came to him, and he healed them. While all these things were going on, Jesus had some people that were criticizing him, standing and watching every single thing he was doing. The chief priests and the scribes, the religious leaders, they saw the wonderful things that Jesus did, and they could hear the little children praising Jesus as they sang that song over and over, Hosanna to the Son of David, and yet they were still so angry. They wanted Jesus to stop, and they wanted the children to stop praising him. The religious leaders didn't understand that their greatest need was to be forgiven of their sins. They didn't believe that Jesus was God's son. They didn't love Jesus. They hated him. They hated him so much that they wanted to kill him. They asked Jesus, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said, yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise? Jesus was saying that it was normal for kids and babies and toddlers and children to praise God. And I want to think about that for a minute. As we get ready to pray, think about the kind of joy that people must have had as they were in the crowd that day, as they saw Jesus ride into Jerusalem. Now we know what happens next in the story, but at that time, people didn't know that Jesus was going to die on a cross. They were celebrating the promise of God to send a king. They just didn't quite understand what kind of king Jesus was going to be yet. But we know that Jesus came into this world to die in our place so that we could have forgiveness for sins. And when he shed his blood on the cross and he became that perfect sacrifice for our sins, Jesus was sinless and his death fully satisfied and took care of God's anger towards sin and us. So in order to be forgiven from our sins, we have to say that we're sorry to God for our sins. And we also have to believe that Jesus died on that cross and was buried 
and rose again from the dead three days later. Let's take a couple moments to thank Jesus for providing for our greatest need, and that's to be forgiven for our sins. Dear God, thank you for making a way for us to have a good relationship with you by sending Jesus to die on the cross to take on the punishment for what we deserved. God, we thank you that you love us no matter what, in spite of all the things that we've ever done and all the things that we're going to do. God, I pray for my young friends that are listening today. God, would you move upon their hearts for them to make the decision to follow you? God, we believe that Jesus died on that cross and he took on our sin and he paid the price and that three days later he rose again. And we believe that you can come into our heart and help us to live for you. God, I pray that even now that you would help my young friends to understand how much you love them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, friends, thanks for listening. Hey, friends, thanks for listening to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. If you like today's show, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. That's the number one way you can support this show. If you're wanting to dive a little bit deeper, you can also join our Patreon community to get our family discussion guides, join our private discussion groups, and have access to bonus content and additional resources every month. Hey, I'm praying for you today. Know that you are so loved.